My least favorite task in terms of maintaining my 3D printer is the Z offset adjustment. In my case, I've got multiple magnetic flexible build plates. Uh, there are different thicknesses. I want to be able to switch and mix and match as needed. And every time I do, I have to readjust the Z offset. If you also happen to have a printer with a fairly thin build plate, you'll find yourself doing this quite a lot as well. And I'm tired of it. I don't want to do it anymore, so let's get rid of it. I'm on my third style of probe. The two on the left are the induction probes. If you have one, you need to replace it uh, with some sort of a switch-based probe. Um, in this case, I'm using uh, Euclid. You can use Clippy as well. And notice on the left of the actual switch here, there's a nice flat spot and you need a touch probe that has that flat spot so we can touch it against a Z end stop switch. So here you can see uh, it's a little blurry, um, but that little shiny piece there, that's my Z end stop switch. You will need a Z end stop switch to make this work. And as you can see in this case, uh, when homing, the print head actually touches this switch and this is how the printer properly determines the print head. Even if you change um, nozzles, this can still work for you. And finally, this video assumes your Z probe, Z height probe um, is installed, adjusted, the software is installed, configured, and everything is ready to go. So now we'll gather some data so we can do the install and uh, update the configuration. So my Z probe is a D2F5 micro switch. Um, this is what's on the Euclid probe. And so you need to go and gather the uh, technical document for whatever switch or brand of switch you're using. And uh, in this case on the Omron, um, if I move down here to the section D25F operating characteristics and within that, Taking a close look at the chart here and the, um, the pre-travel um, section here, um, notice it states it's a half a millimeter of pre-travel. Write that down. So next, home your printer. Then have it gather the probe. In this case, it's an M401 that I've set up previously. And with the control panel or web interface, start jogging it over so it lines up with the Z end stop. And once you're satisfied with the position, write down the X, Y coordinates because we're going to add them to our configuration file. Let's install the Clipper plugin that provides this functionality. This plugin was created by Protoloft um, this is the GitHub where you can get the software. It also has the instructions. I've put the link in the video description. Protoloft provides a very detailed description about how this works, uh, the importance, or rather how the end stop is used. And so it's really worth a read. I highly recommend you read it. Um, it's also important from the perspective, the more you understand, the more uh, the installation and configuration makes sense um, as you work through the instructions. So at this point, I'm just scrolling down uh, to the point where you actually get to the installation instructions and we're simply going to follow these. There's two ways to go about this. Uh, the first one is by copying um, this Python file um, into the extras folder. But this is going to require us to use FTP, install an FTP client if you don't have it. Um, I think it's actually easier to use this option here where we can SSH, change into the directory, make sure it's there, and then get the uh, actual files from git and run the install. So start by copying the change directory into the pi. Um, you probably don't need to do this, but do it anyway, just to be sure. So SSH into your Pi, and again, you should be sitting in the correct directory, but just in case, um, either paste or uh, just change directory into the Pi. 
then go back to the instructions and copy the uh, text, the second row of text, which is the git line. And then simply paste that, hit enter. I've already done this before, so when I hit enter, I get an error, but you won't. You will definitely see some items um, scroll by on the screen as uh, it downloads the proper files. And then go over and copy the third line of text, and this is how you'll execute the installer. And then go ahead and paste that on the command line, and then hit enter. And I'm not going to because I already installed it, but once you hit enter, the installation will start and it'll be over really quick. Once that portion of the install is done, um, move down a little bit and there's this Moonraker update manager. Um, we are going to do this. And the reason we're going to do this is because uh, this allows Moonraker to update uh, uh, this plugin uh, whenever the author Protoloft uh, creates an upgrade. Now, notice I'm not copying that final line. Um, that line actually raises an error for me, and everything works perfectly if I don't include it. So just copy those lines except for that um, bottom one. Then head back into uh, your interface, and in this case, you see my moonraker.conf file. Um, odds are you're not going to see this, and to see it, you have to search for it. Open up Moonraker.com. Is all you do is scroll down to the very bottom of this file, and then paste the text right here. And again, notice I did not include that last line. And then once you're done, um, you can hit save and then close. In case you're wondering why we updated Moonraker with that information, just go down to your software updates in either Mainsail or Fluid. And uh, normally in this section, you have Fluid or Mainsail, Clipper, uh, Moonraker OS packages, but notice now we have Z calibration here. And anytime you click check for updates or it automatically checks for updates, um, if there is an update, you'll get the option to do so here. So head back to the installations instructions and scroll down just a little bit more. And then there's a link here, um, highlighted text called configurations. Um, we definitely want to click on that because we still have to set up uh, the configuration for this. And this is the configuration for the Z calibration command or macro. Um, there's a lot of text here, uh, but don't worry about it. We don't need it all, um, but hit copy and we are going to create our config file. So notice um, I've got something here called autoz.cfg. Um, we're gonna create one of those, you don't have one. And so the way we do that is by hitting the plus sign up above here, and then select add file as the option in the pop-up menu. And then once you do, um, again, you can call this anything you want to, <laughs> um, but this is what made sense to me. And um, once you're done, hit save. And then you should be able to go in and edit the file that you just created. And you wanna paste everything that we copied into here. So click save and then close. And then we're gonna go back into the printer.cfg file and we're going to scroll all the way down where in clipper we have our um, home xy position and you want to copy this and then we can close this and head over to our auto z config file and those coordinates we just took from the um, printer file are going to go right here into the nozzle xy position and then we take the coordinates that we recorded uh, when we jogged um, the micro switch um, over the ZN stop. That's the switch XY position. And then this bed XY position is simply the center of the bed. My bed is 350 by 350, so this was half in both directions. The switch offset is what we took off the spec sheet. Um, when I started, this was 0.50. 0. 
I made some adjustments later and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I left a max deviation and speed alone. The same thing for the probing first fast. And then the M401 macro goes and gathers the Euclid probe. Um, this is the macro I set up previously. And then the M402 returns it back to its holster. Be sure to use whatever macros you've set up for your Euclid or Clicky probe. Once you're done, hit save and close. At that point, enter your printer.cfg file and then add a line, um, include autoz.cfg. And once you're done, hit save and then restart. And so now let's test and tune. So you'll want to home and level your bed first. In my case, that's a quad uh, gantry level. So my printer does not normally run this quickly when it's initializing like this. I'm running this part of the video 300% faster than usual. Um, just so we can get through it, but also just to prove to you that I actually do do it um, before the rest of this. And then going to the council, I type in calibrate underscore Z, which is what we just added. And here it goes, it picks up the probe. And then you can see here where it's um, testing the nozzle height. And now it's actually testing the probe height or measuring it, I guess I should be saying. And then it moves out to the center of the bed and measures that as well. And using these three sets of measurements, it's able to determine the height. Now uh, move the print head out to the center of the bed. Then use a piece of paper or a feeler gauge. I measured this paper with a micrometer and it's 0.1 millimeters thick exactly. In the council, enter in G90 to get into absolute positioning mode. And uh, then enter in G0 and I'm entering a Z5. So I'm gonna move to a position five um, millimeters above the bed. And just to make sure it looks okay, it does. So now I try Z1, so it's one millimeter above. And again, I check it, no head crash or anything. I try 0.5, it seems to be okay. Um, it's, everything's looking reasonable. I try 0.2, it's just barely above the piece of paper. And when I try 0.1, I can feel the paper just uh, barely touching. If you need the nozzle to be closer to the bed, um, go into this Auto Z CFG and modify the switch offset. Uh, notice I mentioned earlier I started at 0.50, I had to bump it up to 0.52. The higher the number, closer to the bed, the lower the number, farther away from the bed. And then hit save and close, restart clipper, and then you can go back and home, um, level the bed or make sure the bed is level, and then go ahead and run the calibrate Z, and then um, enter G90 mode, and try that test again with a test piece of paper or a feeler gauge, and um, until you get the effect or the consistency you're looking for. And then once you're done, that's it. No matter what temperature, it'll work. So to prove this, uh, I decided to switch bed plates. Uh, the one I have on here is uh, quite thick, and the one that I'm about to put in its place is a decent amount thinner. And in theory, uh, this should recalibrate, and um, at that point, I should be able to print. And so here I am, I just flipped out plates, I ran Calibrate Z. Uh, it's running much faster than typical. Uh, this video is 400% faster. Gonna do the paper test here. And um, I entered G90 mode and basically the same steps as before, starting at um, uh, Z set at five, then one, then half, uh, then two, 
and then one, I believe it was. And sure enough, it felt like just like it did on the other one. I had the same amount of drag. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe so you can make sure and be informed of the next set of videos that are coming your way. And thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching.